You all seem to like my first video that I put out on five things to see on the moon. So I thought, why not put out another five? So here's five more great things to see on the moon with a small telescope or even a pair of binoculars. Hello, welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. Right, let's get this kicked off straight away in no particular order at all with number five, the Sea of Serenity. Now, if you are to look at the moon, uh, even with the naked eye, you may have noticed that there's dark patches on the moon. Well, these were once thought to be seas, like oceans of water, but we now know what they are, they are actually, is um, the, the what's called a basin. Now, a basin, or used to be, should I say, a basin. Now, when a meteorite comes in, now this was a huge meteorite that hits the moon, and it was a crater, In uh, that's virtually what a basin is, it's a huge crater. And this is in the early stages of the moon's creation, when it was volcanic. Uh, and then hot lava would run into these huge basins, filling them up, and then obviously uh, setting hard. And this is what why they look like a darker surface, just a little bit like uh, lava on, on planet Earth. Well, exactly like lava on planet Earth in a lot of ways. So this is why we call them the seas. Now, the Sea of Serenity. Why have I brought you there? Well, there's an interesting little feature in, this, in the surface of uh, the Sea of Serenity. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you look closely, you may notice there's like a white streak that runs right across it. Now, this is actually a ejection ray um, that comes from um, a, a crater when a meteorite hits it and just explodes you may have seen like like these rays that come out of craters and that's just the impact rays or ejection rays um, now what's uh, also interesting about this when you see this ejection ray going across uh, the sea of serenity is this is actually from the crater tycho now tycho is on right on the other side of the moon if you like right away from uh, from the sea of serenity so it really just shows you how massive the impact must have been uh, to form the crater Tycho. So don't forget to have a look at this uh, little white band that runs through the Sea of Serenity. Well, we've already mentioned it, so it brings us nicely on to number four, the crater Tycho. Now, Tycho is a prominent lunar crater and is located in the southern highlands of the moon. Now, as you can see, it just is really impressive. I mean, you've got this massive ejection rays just flying all across the moon. Now, this is one of those targets you can quite easily see with the naked eye. Now, Tycho kind of breaks the rules of the best time to observe it, and it is at full moon. Um, it's always the best time to uh, observe Tycho, where you'll get the full effect of the, uh, the, the rays that just spread out literally thousands of kilometers across the lunar surface. Um, because when it's had its phases, at one of its phases, which in actual fact is the best time to uh, observe the moon, um, you kind of lose the rays a little bit and uh, you can kind of get Tycho mixed up with another crater. But definitely well worth a look um, with the naked eye or through binoculars and a small telescope is number three, Tycho. Number three, Proclus or Proclus, however you want to pronounce it. Now, this is a very interesting crater to observe. Now, if you look at it closely uh, at Proclus, you see that it, it too has ejection rays, same as um, Tycho. But what's interesting about this one is you'll notice that they're not symmetrical. They seem to fan out on one side only. Now, this, uh, what causes this is it's when a meteorite comes and hits the moon at a very shallow eye handle. So as it hits the surface of the moon, it's just scattering debris uh, forward and none of it's uh, getting uh, hit backwards, if you like. And uh, so you get this uh, on uh, Pr Proclus, uh, you get this lovely um, vision of how this has happened with this semicircle ejection rays. Really good one to have a look for. Moving on to number two, we're going to go on to the, another sea, the Sea of Tranquility. 
Now, what's interesting about, well, there's a couple of things um, interesting about the Sea of Tranquility. Now, we've already looked at the Sea of Serenity. And if you were to look at the two, you may notice that there is a distinctive color difference. Uh, this photograph may not be showing it, but if you look closely at it uh, with some binoculars or a telescope, you'll notice that the Sea of Tranquility is a lot darker than the Sea of Serenity. Uh, don't worry, your eyes are not tricking you. They are actually a different color. Now, what causes this is uh, the lava in the Sea of Tranquility is rich in the element uh, titanium. Uh, we know this, of course, because this is the famous landing site of Apollo 11 in 1967. And coming in at number one is Clavius. Now, this is a fantastic and very popular crater for amateur photographers. Now, the interesting thing about Clavius is what's actually inside the crater, because if you actually look inside the crater, there's a little sequence of smaller craters ranging from larger to smaller. And it really is bizarre how this is actually formed. It's also a great test for the resolution of your telescope. On the next clear night, just see how many of the inner craters you can see with your telescope. So there you go, folks. Five more great things for you to go and have a look at on the moon. Now, it's always good to actually learn the conditions of the sky because I don't know if you've noticed uh, when you go out sometimes and have a look at the moon, it may appear to be really wobbly. Now, that's bad conditions and believe me, it can get really bad sometimes and it also can get really nice and still and calm. And there's an easy test to know exactly what the atmosphere is doing. And uh, the way you do this is on, on the next clear night, go outside and uh, pick a nice bright star and just notice how it's twinkling. Now, if it's twinkling really fast like this, this usually means the atmosphere is really unstable. What we're looking for is when the stars have a nice, soft, undulating pattern to them and they're just, just gently twinkling, if you like. Um, and this means that the atmosphere is nice and calm. Now, when viewing the moon, it's always good as well, a good idea to view it when it's at its highest. Uh, don't, you, I'm not saying you can't view it when it's low at the horizon, but you're not, you, honestly, you, you're gonna see terrible wobbly views when it's low down to the horizon. Now, again, this is caused by atmospheric disturbances. Uh, imagine if you were in a large swimming pool of crystal clear water, and then somebody would put a certain amount of flour into that water. Um, it had become murky. Now, looking straight down the length of the swimming pool, it would just, like, you'd see it and it'd go into, like, a white blanket almost. But if you were to look straight up, you would see the nice, clear blue sky. This is because you're simply looking through less uh, flower particles. Exactly the same happens with the atmosphere. All the uh, air pollution and, and, and rest of, um, you know, uh, anything, all, all, the, all the sludge, if you like, you're looking through uh, when you're looking uh, at any object when it's low down at the, uh, the horizon. So not just the moon, uh, even the planets, anything you, you want to observe uh, astronomically is always a good time when it's nice and high in the sky. You combine it nice and high in the sky with soft undulating stars and you're going to have a really good night, trust me. Well, that's about it for another video. Thank you so much for watching if you've watched this far. Uh, don't forget, like, subscribe, especially hit that like button if you've enjoyed the video. It really does help the channel out. In the meantime, folks, take good care of yourselves and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.